OK, let's switch to SolidWorks and take a look at the improvements to the sketching tools. OK, so we're going to open up the body of the uh, valve assembly here. And we'll go in and we'll just edit the very first sketch. Now, the first thing that you'll notice here is that we can't see any dimensions. That's because we have a new tool that allows us to toggle the visibility of the dimensions on and off. So if you've got a really complex sketch, it can just make it a bit clearer. The next improvement we see is to creating relationships with midpoints. In previous releases, it would be necessary to right click a line and then from the menu, select the midpoint. Now we can select the midpoint dynamically straight from the graphics area. The next improvement we see is to the context toolbar. So as I click on an entity, the context toolbar appears. Now from here I can select commands um, that are related to that line. So for instance here, I can make this line horizontal. Now at that point in previous releases, that toolbar would have disappeared. In SOLIDWORKS 2016, you can see it stays visible. And that just allows me to select another tool from this toolbar if I want to. So in this case, I'm just going to add a new dimension. Now, as you can see, when I add a new dimension, this actually toggles the visibility of the dimensions back on for me. The way we add dimensions has been um, added to as well. So, and it's been brought more in line with how we add relations. So for instance, here what I'm going to do is select these two lines. Then from the context toolbar, I'll select the smart dimension tool. And let's just go ahead and create a dimension between those two lines for me, like so. We'll do the same down the bottom. So of course the old ways of adding dimensions is still there, it's just an addition to the tool set. We have a new tool which can be found on the sketch toolbar called Instant 2D. Now anyone that's familiar with Instant 3D will probably have a good idea of what this will allow us to do. It just allows us to quickly and easily change dimensions either by typing in new values or dynamically dragging them. So I'll just change this 40 to 35. You can see I can do it very quickly with a single click. And then with this 35 here, you can see I can just grab the blue dot on the end of the dimension and then position that to where I want it to be. I'll just reuse my breadcrumbs to exit out that sketch. Okay, the next thing we'll look at is the change to an offset entities tool. So if I go into this sketch here, we'll just switch that around so we can see it a little bit better. Um, we've selected this face and then we've used the offset entities command to create all of these sketch lines with an offset of three mil. Now, if I want that offset to go to the inside of the face rather than the outside, um, I'd effectively have to start the tool again. Um, but now I can just select the dimensions and then from the property manager, just toggle the direction of that dimension. Like so. The next improvement we see is to connected endpoints. So I have this center line here and this center line here and their endpoints have been merged. Now, um, there is no way in previous releases for me to unmerge this other than deleting the light it, line out or um, perhaps it, I could trim it um, to, to remove that merged um, relationship. Now what I can do in this release is right click and I have a new option to detach segment on drag. If I click on that, the endpoints of the lines will highlight purple and then I can just drag and drop an endpoint to a new position. I'll just finish this sketch off by fully defining it. The tool was released in SOLIDWORKS 2015 and we'll have a look at the improvements in 2016 um, by starting off the whole wizard tool. So I'm just going to draw a circle that's going to act as the PCD for my holes. And we'll just make that construction geometry. Okay, so we'll launch the segment tool. And what that will allow us to do is either split the circle into equal uh, length arcs, or we can equal space sketch points along that arc. Now we can choose how many sketch points we want here. And then just press OK to place those down. 
Now, the difference in this release compared to the old release is that when we place these tools down, or when we place these points down, should I say, um, they were not related to each other in any way. So they were weak space, but you could drag them away from each other. Now you can see they're constrained to each other, and that's due to a new relation type called equidistant. Now what's really nice here is I can select that point, I can delete it out, and it maintains the spacing on the remaining points. I can also select the relation on the right click menu and I've got the option there to edit segment points which takes me back into the original property manager where I can adjust by increasing or decreasing the amount of instances of that point. Switching back to the assembly, uh, we're going to create the gasket that sits against this face. So it's been part way created for us um, already. I'm just going to edit the part and then open up a sketch on the face. Now we know with the convert entities tool that if we have a face selected it will convert all the outer loops of that face um, to sketch geometry. The inner loops have always been more difficult. You've had to basically either control select them or select the face and an internal edge. Um, however the, the process was always quite long-winded, um, open to error. Um, so we've seen some nice improvements to that tool within this release. If I go to convert entities, I can select the face and then I have the option to select all of the inner loops. You can see it selects all of those inner loops for me. And then if I just press okay, that's all of them complete. And we'll just extrude that to a suitable distance. Finally, we'll have a look at some improvements to hole wizard hole. So if I just edit this counter ball, you'll see in the property manager that we've defined an, a hole size of M24 and an end condition of up to next. Now, in previous releases, if we were to switch hole type, we'd effectively lose that information that we've specified here, and it would reset back to its default. Now I can change from, in this instance, a counter ball to a tap, and you can see the M24 and up to next end condition are maintained. Similarly here, if I take this hole and edit it, the yellow boxes indicate that we've had some custom sizing applied to this tapped hole. Now again, if I was to change from a straight tap to a pipe tap, we would lose these custom sizing values. They would reset themselves back to default. Now in SOLIDWORKS 2016, we're presented with a warning message. It tells us the current hole type is our custom sizing applied. What would you like to do? And we can either choose to keep the custom sizing values and apply them to the new hole type, or reset the custom sizing values to their default values for the new hole type. So if we keep them, you can see it maintains those values for us automatically. We can just complete our job like so. Okay, so just to summarize, we've seen improvements to convert entities where it now handles the internal loops of a face. We can select the midpoint directly. We have a new tool called Instant 2D and we can add and remove points and we can reverse our sketch offset direction when using the offset entities command. We now switch to Ed for the third feature.